Am I dreaming? No. And yes. Well, which is it? So this is a dream. It's an opportunity. To what? To know thyself. Oh, give me a fucking break. <laughs> Hey, give me your flashcards, I'll quiz you. Excuse me? You're cramming for a midterm, right? I'm staying up all night too, I'll quiz you. I'm sorry, do Look, we know each other? Look, we're the only two people in the hotel drinking coffee at 10 o'clock at night. Kind of makes you my special friend. I don't think it does. It could. I like it really sugary. It's a metaphor for something, right? Why, how do you like yours? Alone. Well, I'm here if you want to use me. College can be tough, especially freshman year. You're about 15 years off, but thank you. It's sweet. It's a sugar talking. Yo, girl. You got some cutes on you? Yeah. <laughs> you look like you're a co-ed, but clearly you're not. Clearly that's just some fantasy I have personally. Because I didn't have enough sex when I was in college. Whatever did you do in college? I drank a lot of crunchy coffee, wrote some mediocre plays. You're a playwright? Retired. If we get hitched, you're the breadwinner, okay? Okay. I've been looking for a retired diabetic guy. You remind me of somebody. Let me guess. Why are you caffeinating so late? I have clients taking me to a late dinner. They put you up at the hotel? You staying here too? Feel the bed yet? Amazing. I only got to lay down in it for a few minutes, but I didn't want to get back up. Well, it's not called the bedfellow for nothing. I'm really looking forward to seeing that bed later. I'm really looking forward to seeing you in that bed later. <laughs> Who are you? Damn. <laughs> Julie. I'm not ready to go back. No, and they understand that. They're not asking you to. You have to understand that it's almost impossible to feel anything but completely ineffective over there. Kate, listen to me. There aren't enough resources. We've all been through that. And no one over here cares. I swear to God, sometimes it feels like I'm the one who's... We're glad you're decompressing. Are you enjoying the city? I am. And then I end up feeling guilty as fuck. Well, look. If you want to do some work for the resettlement office, we have an arrival coming in next week. The guy's got family in Brooklyn. I think they'd really benefit from your perspective. Hey, give me a message. It's me. I haven't heard from you. I was thinking of taking some time off. I'm mean, not tomorrow, but soon. And anyway, call me. Hope you're working hard. You know, the job is called doorman because you're the man that stands at the door. Kind of in the middle of something, Baron. Wait, do you work here? Yes, and I'm hotel security, so. Don't you have something you need to go and secure? Yeah, you, to the door. Like some uranium? Do. He's Korean. But he thinks he's Jewish. I am Jewish. I'm Jewish, you're annoying. Are you really the doorman? Yeah, but not for like another two minutes. Wanna make out until then? Damn. I should get to my dinner. Oh, don't go. 
Will I see you later? Maybe. Well, you can't miss me. I'll be standing outside the hotel. Will you hold the door open for me? Like a perfect gentleman. You're disgusting. Don't start with that one now. Byron, will you leave me alone? You know, the world's much bigger than what's in your pants, Dan. Go get the dinner orders to Max. Give me a burger and a cupcake. Thank you so much for attending night three of the 497 Festival. That is 49 seven-minute plays from some of the best new writers in seven days. We will see you tomorrow night for seven more. Thank you. That is not an excuse. I am saying he shouldn't have promised us if he wasn't going to show. We do have four more nights Actually, left. by the time it's reviewed, the thing will be over. There were 10 people in the house tonight. Do you want me to give out tickets in the park again? Great show. Max. I gotta get to work. Hey, hey, what's your problem? What's my problem? You're practically fingering some girl in the lounge. So? Had I known your idea of freedom, Max, then... don't pretend like you didn't want to see other people. I never did anything in front of you, Dan. No, only behind my back. But forget it, okay? I got carried away. She was reminding me of April for some Wait, reason. Wait, she reminded you of April? Not like that, you sick fuck. You're the sick fuck. Tomorrow would have been her birthday, okay? Can you calm down? It's okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't, don't be mad at me. Can I? I have to go out tonight after work, and then I have to be up for class in the morning. Thank you. I'm gonna get out for her. Good morning, sir. This is your wake-up call. Sir, I think you did. It says here, 10 a.m. Oh, you're right. I, I'm so sorry. Um, we, we will call you back in uh, 12 hours. There are so many hot girls out there tonight. It is like an oasis of ass. Oasis. Where is Dan? I got a jettison. I left him fighting with Ashley and making out with a guest in the lounge. Please don't say it's a chick for 503. What's up, my brothers? I'm Byron. Did you make out with 503? Who's 503? You gotta wear a tie now. Because I checked her and she totally wants to hunt me. Chris, I can't, man. She does want to hunt you, she told me. These all the check-ins? Roger put me in charge of wake-up calls and dress code. Hopefully you'll be better at dress code. It's choking me or something. I literally, I can't breathe. I came trying. You order the food yet? The Kaifeng Jews of China. What? They're Jewish and they're Chinese. Are we still talking about this? I thought you were Korean. I am. The point is... I honestly don't care. You've been judging me because... I'm judging you because you have a ponytail. <laughs> because you're looking for answers that you're never going to find. I'm trying to help you, Byron. Why did you convert? Because you're looking for God or something? You want to know why the world exists or why things are the way they are? There isn't a why. It's a clusterfuck. The world may be bigger than what's in my pants. Not bigger than what's in my pants. But what it is, it's chaotic and fucking meaningless. All of it. Feel my towels? What? They're fresh and warm. Would you like to feel them? I'll feel them, Darpak. What the hell was that? He does overnight housekeeping. He used to work days. You no, know, he used to be an archaeologist in India. Oh, shit. And now he works here? Well, he just became the coolest of all you overnight fuckers. Good morning. Good evening, the bedfellow. Who's calling, please? Century Store Credit Division. Why are they calling you? What's up with you and Ashley? Taking a break, Mikey. You should hit 503 for me. It will make you feel better. I'm on top of the world. You're amazing. 
I only read the first act, but it's really, really good, Danny. Yeah? Is the sister supposed to be me? You like that role? It's a different kind of play, different than what you've done before. I really like it. You okay? Special day tomorrow. Who are you talking to? Hey, no one. Just some dialogue I was thinking about. You writing again? No. I will give you a slot in the festival. Buddy, writing a seven minute play is seven minutes longer than anything I want to do. How'd it go tonight? Nick Ackerman totally flaked on that review he promised us. Fuck that guy, you don't need him. No, we do need him. Byron, food's here. Come to the festival tomorrow night, stay four already. How many performances are there? Seven. God bless your metabolism. 49 seven minute plays in seven days. Hello? I got it. Oh, hello. How are you, Dan the Doorman? Hey, I gotta step away for a minute. Don't eat that. I wasn't planning on it. Buddy, I'll see you in the morning. We'll walk home. Hey, what about the show? <laughs> you do this a lot, don't you? Do what? Help you out of the rooms? Because I do not do this. I didn't think you did. I'm a good girl. I believe it. <laughs> oh, we shouldn't have sex. No, God no. I'm only in town for a few nights. I don't have protection, do you? No, but... Every bed in the room does come equipped with an intimacy kit. You do do this a lot. No, I, I swear. I, I just know that it's there. That's all. Seriously, we don't have to do anything you don't want to do. You know you're full of shit, right? Eleven ninety-five charge discreetly to your incidental. It's not a cheap date. Hey. It's for later. I'm afraid to let you have any more sugar. You might die of an overdose. Well, it does seem to be the trend, doesn't it? Mm.
Seriously? Where are they? No, no, hey, hey, that's this. Our apartment is private. Give me the keys. Fine, I went out last night. I got wasted. I don't want to go uptown. Actually, I'm serious. Give me the keys. What? Would you rather I go to Mikey's? Some fucking toothbrush? I mean, this place is messy, but at least he has room. You're unbelievable. <laughs> Mitt's gonna make gloves in the morning. I thought that was only on Shabbat. I'll come back on Saturday. Look, I really don't want to be doing this right now. What would you rather be doing? Spooning with Max? <laughs> it's kind of gay, isn't it? One bed. There's no room, dummy. You see room for another bed? I got a shower. I don't mind. You still on the pill? Yeah. You okay? Are they drugs? They're diet pills. She thinks they're drugs. They're drugs? They're not drugs. You're a drug dealer. They're called Lean Man Pro. I've been taking them for years. Lean Man Pro? What the hell is in them? It's like caffeine and ma huang and stuff. Keeps you thin. Awake. She thinks they're drugs. And now you're keeping me awake. We take it tonight. Hey, Rach. I got your message. Are you sure you want to do this? Yeah. I'll text you Mosey Kasipin's information. His brother's on the flight next week. When did Mosey get out of the region? Five years ago. Lucky family. And they'll be lucky to have you. Hey, a few of us were thinking about staging a forgotten crisis rally on Saturday. I'll join you. In the meanwhile, why don't you enjoy yourself a little? Go see a show or something. We'll see. Happy birthday. Oh my God. Are you Dan Bender? Hey. I'm Marie. I'm a huge fan. Your play a few years ago was so rad. Oh, thanks. It was here, wasn't it? Can I tell you something? I had no idea. You fooled everyone in the audience. Oh, that was the idea. Are you writing something for 497? I kind of think the whole thing's a little ridiculous. Wow, I hope you like my play. It's about depression. Dan Bender. Really? You remember him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just over there. So rad. You know, the theater used to be a porn house. Yeah? How do you know that? Oh, I didn't used to come here. Interesting choice of words. No, I, I used to, I used to work here. Uh-huh. Buttering the popcorn. Whoa. Okay. 
You just crossed the line. Hey, <laughs> you started it, Danny. How do you know my name? Did you see my play, too? How do we... I can't believe this. It's been about 12 years. 12? Who are you? To those who joined us on night one through three of our festival, welcome back. To the new folks, welcome to you as well. This is night four of our seven-day festival featuring 49 new plays by some of the country's most exciting new voices. Tonight, you will see seven world premieres, seven-minute plays collected by literally hundreds of people across the world. What's up, Katie? I, I can't believe this. Look at you. I know. How did you even hear about this? Uh, Wait, what are you doing right now? I was maybe gonna go listen to my friend DJ. He does parties and stuff. Let's go somewhere, like Atlantic City or something. 100%, yes. Dude, 503 just asked when you were coming in. What happened last night? Exactly. Holy shit. Hey, is Roger there tonight? No. How would you like to cover me? Are you serious? Where are you right now? Come on, man, you could totally use the cash. Yeah, that's true, let's do it. Where'd you meet this one? In Jersey about 20 years ago. I can't really talk about her because she's standing right here, but she really likes me and has since she was like eight years old. Ah. You're like all the Avengers in one. I promise I'll make it up to you. And you definitely got your cock from the incredible Thanks, home. man. Really appreciate it. I am completely yours. I really wanted to fly back when I heard. It was a very average show. You were traveling? Yeah, after college, I started working with the International Rescue Committee. Whoa. Cool. Where? Uganda, Chad, South Sudan. So all the tourist spots. Mm-hmm. You going back? I've never really lived in New York, so I'm just crashing with a friend, trying to enjoy myself. I'll help. Okay. So why weren't you in the festival? I mean, my mom told me all about your play a couple years ago. It's not really my thing anymore. So what do you think? <laughs> well, I always liked your plays. Lady Katie was quite the ingenue. I always felt like anything was possible down there. Where, my basement? Mm-hmm. April, this is Dad's magical windbreaker of invisibility. Katie, when she puts this on, you can't see her, okay? I had such a crush on you when I was a kid. I have such a crush on you right now. I'm gonna go use the little geisha's room. By the way, this is not Atlantic City. That is, yeah. Excuse me. This credit not a done authorize. Oh, no worries. I got another. Que te por favor la etiqueta engomada. That's my last card, so no shopping sprees, okay? This the hotel? It's a secret side entrance. Want to see the roof? We got to take a freight elevator. Yes, please. So how'd you end up working here anyway? We took overnight jobs to make theater during the day. Max is a bit more invested in that plan. Are you working? Uh, no, I'm up tonight. Kate, this is Jacob. Uh... Oh, Darpak. Hello, Kate. Hello, Darpak. You're allowed to have. Uh, and this is Purusha. Hello. Would you like to feel him? He's soft and warm. 
Is that uh, one of your plays, Dan? Hmm? No. Uh, how did you know I... Uh, Krista told me you write plays. Not really. I like plays. Sweet. To hold us to wear the mirror up to nature. Yes? Hmm. Krista told me of your last play. He said it was truly shocking and bizarre. Thanks. <laughs> Place. Yeah. All right, well, good night then. The city's gone through so much since we were kids, you know? I find myself just walking, taking pictures. I'll walk from Soho to Central Park or the West Village to the seaport. So many people everywhere, all the time. And at night, they really don't want to sleep. Don't sleep, just play. They want to stay up and eat and drink and make love and devour life. Go to a show or a little club or a cafe and stay drunk all day and all night. They want to walk and walk and never stop for traffic. Have you noticed that people in the city can't wait to cross the street? They practically hug a taxi as it races by them just so they can get to the other side a little sooner. I love that. It's like they can't wait to just keep on living or something. Well, Maybe they're just really impatient. You know, maybe one of the subway lines broke down and they're really late for work. Maybe you're just jaded, Danny Bender. Maybe you're just adorable, Katie Darrow. Hi. You a cab? No, is Dan coming in tonight? No, he called in sick. Oh, poor baby. Maybe I should bring him some soup? No, he's probably unconscious by now, but I'm sure you'd take good care of him if you did. Right. That was pretty funny, you know? I know. <laughs> Can you just help me out? Hey! Oh, are you okay? Whoa, 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 whoa. Fuck! Hey. Are you fucking He just needs a little me? help, man, okay? You better get your bitch in order, man. Sorry, man. She's not well. Here She's... you go. Fuck! Are you okay? All right. Hey. You all right? Yeah. What the hell was that? He was clearly asking for help, and that guy totally pushed him. So you smacked him in the face? We're lucky he didn't stab us. Is that how they do it at the rescue place? You know acts of kindness release pleasure chemicals in the brain? What now? They're found in the person giving and receiving, and anyone watching, too. So what constitutes an act of kindness? Smacking random dudes in the face? No, but helping someone in need or reaching out to someone. Mm -hmm. What about petting cats in elevators? Of course. <laughs> so you're saying that if we started heavy petting right now, purely as an act of kindness towards each other, that people on the street watching us would feel good, too? Well, in this case, I think there's a lot of people that would feel an overwhelming sense of jealousy. Oh, yeah? Why's that? Because there's a lot of people out here that want to pet me. Really? Yeah, that homeless man, for one. That hot dog vendor over there, that married couple, they love me. I'm not a very good person. What? I might just be trying to sleep with you. I don't think you're no, trying No, 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 to. trust me, I am. And I keep thinking about you guys as little kids, and it's kind of freaking me out. Okay. Look, forget it. Can I call you tomorrow? Dan. You know what it is? I'm just feeling, like, uh, protective. Who are you protecting me from? Well, that guy and his gang, if they come back for revenge. Look, put your number in my phone. Uh, We'll hang out this week, and we'll do something fun. Are you okay? Is this because yeah, I... Yeah, no, 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 don't worry about it. I'm just tired. I got a lot on my mind. Are you cool? Yeah. Listen, 
It's amazing to see you, Kate. Let's hang out this week. Don't beat up the cab driver. Hey, man. Dan, Roger, at the Bedfellow. I need you over at the hotel. Oh, hey, Roger. Uh, isn't Mikey there? He was covering my shift. Mikey's here, but I need you over here now, too, please. Is everything okay? We're gonna have to let you go, Dan. Okay. I'm on my way. You know, the uh, hotel doesn't allow pets, and they're a little trigger happy right now, so watch your back. She saw me leaving with Kate, told my manager it was some sort of hotel predator. I mean, she's right. But I can't cover your rent again this month. Don't worry about that, I got cash. Where? Please tell me you didn't activate that credit card from Mexico. She's so weird and violent, but she's Who is? right. Kate. April's best friend growing up. Yeah, she's got this idealized view of the city, it's so... Listen. I can get you a job here. And I am sure that your dad would Don't love even think it. You cannot max out another card, Dan. Look, I'm already in debt. There's a point at which it doesn't really matter anymore. This whole thing doesn't have to be so hard. We deserve to feel good, don't we? Don't we deserve to feel good? Yeah. New York was meant to be devoured. Look, I got seven grand on this card. Let's just, let's just fill it up with good times and, and good food and bitches and Broadway plays. Did you just say bitches and Broadway plays? I'm tired sense? of feeling trapped by everything. By the job and that, that ridiculous schedule, by Ashley and my dad's incessant calling and everything the fuck else. I just like, I wanna feel free. Let's go and have some fun. What, now? I gotta work. For what? For rent. I'll take care of it, I promise. Look, the show was really, really good. Let's go out and celebrate. Again, I will get a gun. I swear to God. Uh, well, you know, I'm gonna have to call you back, okay? Last night was fun. Yeah, it was. You still owe me 700 from the VIP room. Oh yeah, no problem. What'd you say you did again for a living? I'm independently wealthy. Oh my God, I love you. Listen, um, I've gotta go see, but stay as long as you want, okay? Okay. And if you do stay, would you mind taking out the recyclables? Um... Oh, and there's a party, um, 516 Greenwich tonight, in the basement. You should stop by. 516 Greenwich? Yeah. Just say you were Scott. Where's the cash, lover? It's, uh, in here? 
Oh, you know what? I'm gonna have to pay you back tonight. I spent all the cash on me karaoke and stuff. <laughs> okay. You know, but you better not fucking flake, all right, dude? I still gotta pay the club. No worries. I'm looking for Mosey Kasipin. You must be Kate. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. One day. Yes. In four days. A seat opened up on a flight to Philadelphia and we were able to get Azzy on board. And beyond words. We'll pick him up in Philly and then we'll bring him to the IRC. We'll see him in four days. Five years I wait to see him again. Five years I don't know that he's alive. We're so glad that we found him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look, I, I finished work early today. My son Joseph and I will drive you anywhere you want to go. Oh, that's very sweet of you, but you don't need to do that. No, 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 I insist. You and your friends have filled me so much with hope, kids. I didn't tell you the rest of what happened last night. What's the matter with you? I can't do that again. I shouldn't have taken off work. I just gotta focus on the show right now. The show's good, I told you. I can't seem to get anyone to give a shit. Ackerman can't come and review the thing until closing night. Why do you need reviewers so bad? You're only running a week. I I'm trying to make a name for myself. We got nice run-ups for my play. That was two years ago. Okay, so Ackerman says go see Max's magical seven-minute play festival. It'll give me a shot to do something bigger. Like what? Something bigger. I don't know, something important. Like what? I've never been so acutely aware of time before in my life. I feel like time is running out for us. I don't know what that means. It means there's only so much time left before we're dead. It is a finite amount of days. Wait, you're afraid of dying all of a sudden? No. I'm afraid of dying having lived a completely insignificant life. There's so much I want to do. Don't you understand that? I, I want to make my mark before I die. What if you die young? I won't have accomplished anything. I'll be remembered as a failure. Why do you care if you'll be remembered at all? You'll be dead. Don't spend any more money. This is the NYPD calling. We got a complaint that you slapped a young man right in his punum. You sound like an old man that works at a kosher deli. I can only do like three characters, so. And what character were you doing last night? Let me make that up to you. What are you doing tonight? I thought you worked at night. I'm taking some time off. I'm going to hear my friend DJ because you made me miss him last night. We went to Atlantic City. Right. Will you save tomorrow day for me? Maybe. It kind of inspired me to free myself from the, uh... And I bought this new jacket and I, I look really good. Oh, well, in that case... Look, let's just have an adventure and, and, and collect pleasure chemicals all day. Okay. I'll call you in the morning. I'll be waiting by the phone. Has he not called you yet? I haven't heard from him. I totally told him to. 
It's all right, you just tell him. I'm thinking about taking some time off. He'll understand what it means. How are things between the two of you? Oh, so good. <laughs> Dan deserves a nice girl. You keep bringing me dresses to fix. I'll keep tabs on them that way. I'm just fucking with you, man. Come on, we're gonna go back to my office. We're gonna send some faxes. <laughs> And Joseph is the prince of Mosey's band. He's the freshest MC of all the land. <laughs> Joseph, <laughs> we have to let Miss Kate go to her party now. Why are you going to a party? Um, because I'm going to listen to my friend play some music. I can play trumpet too. You can? Well, Dad, can Kate come to our house for dinner tomorrow? You'll have to ask Kate. I would love to, Joseph. Can I bring a friend? Yes, of course. In honor of Nikki, little Nikki, the second best stuff I could get my hands on. <laughs> now, please, make love to it. Ah. Hey, love a man. Are you trying to fuck me? Yeah. What do you mean? It was 700. She owes me a grand. I only had her seven, so. Well, I just have to make it up to me. The way that whores make up things to people. <laughs> that whore way, you know? I don't know over there. Mother! Oh, oh, oh. Finished reading my play. I just finished the second act. It's weird, but it's good. You know, if I was there that night, I would have done something to stop you. I know. You're like my angel, Danny. I would have walked right in there. And I would have done something. Just don't get hurt, okay? Whatever. To keep you from, to keep you from the Harlem wind. And to each one seeing the words that they need, I'll stand beside the ship now. And to each one listening to wind in the trees, my voice behind the ship now. And I can see each, each one of us here. Twice in two days, what are the chances? Oh my god. This is your DJ friend? Yeah. Hey, what's up? Can I talk to you for a second? Do you trust me? Yes, what's the matter? You and I should leave. Tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow. Creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. Is this the sort of thing where you show me on the doll what's bothering you? Methinks it was not the sort of revelry we would desire to attend. <laughs> Who's that supposed to be, anyways? Good morrow, Kate, for that's your name, I hear. It's Shakespeare. It is? Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> April gave them to me when we were kids. You ever get high with her? Your sister? I had maybe the greatest high I ever had with her. But it was way before she got into that stuff. We were like eight at the time. Eight? What were you doing? It's almost, it's almost like a dream. 
We were in your backyard, and we were lying in the grass, looking at the stars. It was summer, and we were just lying there, talking, growing sleepy. And for some reason, we started talking about death. I think your mom had come up in conversation. And April was a very deep person, even at that age. We were talking about this idea of nothingness and what happens when you die and how nothingness is still kind of something. And then all of a sudden my body started to feel really big and really light at the same time, you know? And, and she was feeling it too. And I was, I was overcome with this immeasurable sense of bliss. Just this glowing connectedness to each other and everything and the stars. It was one of the strangest and most beautiful feelings I've ever felt in my entire life. That sounds, uh... How long did it last? couple minutes. But with everything she got into later, I, I was always afraid she was trying to recapture that. No, somehow. Mm -hmm. It had more to do with my dad than anything else. She had her first drink when she was nine. She and my dad were smoking dope when she was 14. Is there a man in there? We gotta go. What's the matter now? I think it's uh, the shady credit card from Mexico that Max owes money to. We don't want to deal with them right now. Come on, it's trying to be safe. Why don't you Come just on. tell them Max isn't here? No, I tried that last time. They get really aggressive. We can hear you in I can get aggressive. That's not a good idea either. Come on. Where are you going? So, uh, what the hell was it? What? You sure you guys didn't ingest me through a strange mushroom in my backyard? No, I swear. Are they allowed to do that to the door? I know, right? I did take this world traditions class in college, and the closest thing I ever found to even somewhat describing what happened to us is this Zen Buddhist idea called kinship. That's where they cook it on your table, right? <laughs> no! Hey, where are you staying again? Kate Avenue and Main Street, please. It's like a spontaneous awakening, an experience of your truest nature. Yeah, but something must have caused it, or, or you deserved it. Maybe because you're so goddamn pretty. Everyone deserves to be happy. I'm sure they do. It's just, it's, it's very elusive. Trust me, I've been looking. Maybe you're looking in the wrong place. What was your big play about a few years ago? It was about an invisible man named Jerome Paul. Did he wear a magical windbreaker of invisibility? <laughs> I can't believe you remember that. The whole thing is a fractal. It was a play within a play within a play. I'm telling you, he's invisible. And he's in this room. He lured us here so he could take you away from me. Halfway through the story, seemingly about this famous racquetball player who discovers the secret to quantum manipulation, Dan Bender, the playwright, walks out onto stage all nervous, announces he's the playwright, and tells the audience he's stopping the play. You walked out onto stage? No, it was this terrific actor named Peter. Playing you. Right. I don't know, I just had this overwhelming urge right now to, to stop it. To stop the play. And of course, everyone in the audience who knew me 
knew it was some kind of a bit. Strangers and critics just were mildly confused. Okay. But it gets better. Halfway through Dan Bender explaining why he's stopping the play, the real Dan Bender stands up in the middle of the house and interrupts him. That was you. Right. At least me playing myself. I'm Dan Bender. That's Peter. I'm Dan, I swear. <laughs> and apparently, I was so convincing as the real me that I made people actually believe, my friends included, that as a one-time experiment for that performance only, I was, in fact, stopping my own play. A play that I wrote about a playwright who stops his own play. That's very postmodern. Yeah, and critics ended up keeping the secret so that people kept coming back not knowing what to expect. So how did it end? Well, the audience didn't know what to do. Do they leave? Do they ask for their money back? Yeah, Christopher? Are we gonna get our money back? That's a good question. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and then, all of a sudden, Jerome Paul, the invisible racquetball player, comes back. Aha. Uh -huh. And everybody knows they were duped. The whole thing ends with this awesome fight sequence to the death. Knowing you, you would have loved it. It's not that I like fighting, Dan. No, I just meant you have a special appreciation for violence. No, I don't. But you do. <laughs> you were about to get aggressive. I've seen the... things. Okay. All right, don't get preaching. I'm trying to end violence. That's my life's work. What's yours? You still want to go to Atlantic City? No. You remind me of the beach, you know. My moisturizer has SPF in it. No, I mean, you make me a little less afraid, Kate. I get scared too. All right, tomorrow. Let's just pretend it's you and me in my basement. Except the whole city is our basement. So no fear, no consequences. Anything is possible, just you and me. Sound good? Yeah. How's the jacket? I love it so much, I want to buy it again. <sighs> Let's hit it. Daniel Bender, I represent Century Store. We're here to repossess a few items that were purchased on credit. May we come in? Maid's coming tomorrow, huh? Oh, snap. These are very good. Do it again. Okay, do the spell. You know, my hair would look like yours if I let it grow out. This is one of my favorites. These boys had been separated when their village was attacked, but they were reunited in our camp. It's the essence of joy. Dad, can I show Miss Kate my room? You'll have to ask her.
I would be delighted, Joseph. Be careful. He still has a bunch of coins left in his hair. I think you might have a little performer on your hands. Yes. It's very dramatic. I bet he is like you. Like the way you were, yes? Creative, always pretending. Yeah. He seems like a very special kid. Yes, he amazes me. Every day, he amazes me. His life is... It's like a miracle. There are no other children under five that escaped our village. He's the only one. Does he remember what happened? I don't know what he remembers. I watch him sometimes and I wonder. Because we woke that night then to terrible things. The sounds were coming from every direction. And he didn't cry at first. His eyes were surprised, confused. So I held his little face in my hands and I said, Joseph, you shut your eyes now and you keep them shut no matter what happens. Then I put the blanket over him. I calmed my wife and my daughter and I went outside with my brother Azzi. And we saw things done that I cannot describe to you. Things that no man should ever see. And so we fought. We fought with what we had, but we knew we would not survive. We would not survive if we stayed. Every house was burning. They were burning the entire village to the ground. When me and Azir were separated, I, I didn't think I would ever see him again. So I went back into my house. There, I found my wife and my daughter. They had been forced to suffer unspeakable things at the hands of the Janja wheat before they died. But little Joseph, little Joseph was safe. He was right where I left him, under his blanket, eyes closed tight. And before I lifted him onto my back, I asked God one thing. I said, God, please, let him not have heard what happened in this house. Let him not have heard his mother. Let him not have heard his sister. It was a very thin blanket, so I know it was a lot to ask. But I said, God, if you do this for me, I promise I will take this boy far away from here. I will raise him to be a great man. So I put him on my back and I ran into the night as fast as I could. I ran for hours until I collapsed to the earth to rest. There, we saw the village burning in the distance. And I looked at little Joseph, his face streaked with tears. But there was a calm about him, a peacefulness that amazed me. And I said, Joseph, you are the bravest boy I know. So I came home to a completely destroyed apartment. No door, air mattress stabbed to death. Now some gentlemen are here taking our stuff away. Rent's due, and Mikey from the hotel is tied up in our bathroom. Call me. Message is kept. You still
stupid fucking asshole. I invite you to a party and you steal from my friend. What are you, a fucking moron? Bender, this is Scott. How are you? I found remnants of my property in your toilet last night. That was rather unfortunate, especially because I used your friend Mikey's head to inspect the area. Look, uh, I'm not a violent man, Dan. I'm a fair one, though. Factoring in the stuff, plus my own personal inconveniences, you owe me $5,000. Get it to me by tomorrow or I stab you in the neck. Dan, it's me. I just wanted to let you know what a wonderful Shabbat evening I'm having. And I'm gonna meet up with someone you actually know quite well. I saved a handful of your magic pills. I'm sure the two of us are. Dude, it's Mikey. You're a dick. Hey, Danny. It's your sister. This is only an imaginary message created in your own head. But I wanted to tell you that I'm almost done reading your play, and I'm just so proud of you. So, we wait for Azzy at the IRC on Monday, yes? Transpo will bring him from Philly at 6. But I'll see you at the rally tomorrow. Oh, yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Dan, are you also coming? I can't wait for Azzy to meet both of you. You don't belong here. You ever see a play where one character doesn't really fit with the other characters? That's kind of how I see you. Today was one of the best days ever, but it's all, none of it is real. What's not real? I mean, you need to be helping people and, and not wasting your time with... Kate, I'm not this person. Uh, I'm, I'm depressed and I'm lost and I haven't been honest with you. About what? About what, Dan? Okay, I, I, I stole some drugs from that party we were at. I owed this girl some money, a, a stripper that I met a few nights ago, and she owed this guy Scott, so I gave the money to him, but I didn't realize he was a drug dealer. So I gave this drug dealer some money, and I didn't want to be indirectly responsible for some dumb kid ODing, you know? So I stole some stuff from him, I flushed it down the toilet, and he was the one who was at the apartment last night. Okay. And I got fired from the hotel the night we met for sleeping with a guest the night before. I'm also in debt pretty bad, about 50 grand Did or so. Did you sleep with the stripper too? What? No. Yeah. Anyone else this week? My ex was, was somewhere in there, but that's over. Well. This doesn't really seem like such a good idea anymore. Yeah. I'm disappointed, but mostly I'm just sad for you, Dan. I'll see you around. One hundred percent, by the way. You asked me what the chances were of us running into each other twice in two days, and the answer is 100%. Why is that? Because it happened. You want to tell me what you're doing with her? She called me very upset. I thought something had happened to you. Me? I'm fine. Well, you don't look fine. You look sick. I always look like this. What were you doing with her? She said the two of you broke up. Yeah, weeks ago. She insisted that I meet her for a drink. Ah, oh, so you're drinking again. Great. We met for coffee. We were there for five minutes and she collapsed. You sure there wasn't anything else you gave her? Dan. I'm just saying it's not unusual for someone to overdose trying to impress you. How long? 
How long are you gonna punish Don't me? Don't put it off on me, man. You're the one that's something with himself. You're right. I do. After your mother. It's not a day that goes by that I don't regret not being a better father to you and your sister. If I could have kept her from experimenting with that shit, I would have. If I could have given my own life, I would have. But I'm gonna tell you something, Dan. You're not dealing with your grief and continuing to blame me. It's not gonna bring her back. I am trying to be a better man. How about you? You can go home now. I'll stay with her. Please go home. Why are you giving me the pills? Are you all right? No. You're only supposed to take two. You didn't tell my dad they were for me, did you? Why were you giving them to me? I don't know why I do have the things I do anymore. Get out, Dan. You want to tell me what's going on? Ashley overdosed on Main Man Pro. I've been up all night. She okay? Yeah, she's in the hospital. Mikey told me about what you did at that party. Can we talk about this in the morning? It is the morning. When we wake up. I have been up all night too, working, remember? Do you at least have rent? It is due and you owe me for two months. I have it, but trust me, I need it for something else, okay? I can't do this anymore. Do what? You get yourself fired, our apartment is destroyed, you look terrible, you put Ashley in the hospital, and you can't pay rent. Do I really look terrible? That's it. We can't sleep together anymore. What, are you breaking up with me? And seriously, go someplace else. I mean it. I have got to get some sleep. It is the last night of the show, and Ackerman's gonna be there. That's a miracle. What is that supposed to mean? Nothing. No, tell me what that means. You wanna know why no one wants to come see your show, Max? There's a reason why no one has ever done a seven-minute play festival before. Because it's ridiculous. You can't tell a story in seven minutes, it's impossible. Yeah? You wanna know what else is ridiculous? A playwright who only has one produced play about a playwright who stops his own play. That's ridiculous. No, no. It was a play about a playwright who stops his own play about a playwright who stops his own play. It was a gimmick. It was a juvenile stunt because you're too afraid to really put yourself out there. And ever since April died, you are more interested in destroying yourself and everything around you than living like a real human person. This has nothing to do with you. And stop talking to yourself. You sound crazy. I'm not. I just heard you. I've been doing it for months. I'm talking to a ghost and it doesn't make me crazy. It makes me Hamlet. What's up, little pup? Oh, fuck. You're gonna make me a run. So wait here. Dan? Burn. Jesus, you scared me. You coming to services? Yeah. No. What? What are you doing here? You work security? I'm here for services. You're kidding, right? No, I'm here every Saturday. Look, I don't have time for this. Is there another exit inside? I think so. Aren't you coming in? To services? Fuck no, I'm just hiding. From what? I gotta get out of here. 
right, well, it's right through here. Uh, why don't you just stay? You look ridiculous. Why? You're not Jewish, Byron. I'm probably more Jewish than you are, Dan. My mother was Jewish. And I converted five years ago. Okay, first of all, you have a black name. That's the first thing. It's been on everybody's mind, and it's weird. I was named after Lord Byron. Second of all, the thought of going in there with you and your yarmulke makes me extremely uncomfortable. Why? Because Korean dudes with black names can't magically become Jewish, okay? It's a bloodline. Why, why do you think we intermarry? Is that why you're with Ashley? That girl's... Mishigana. Jews stick together because we've been persecuted for thousands of years. So it's okay for you to persecute me. important cause people just don't understand no, how really, much really thanks i'm late and i'm not into it please just help me out we really need young supporters and we're trying to get congress i to... signed one of those things for climate change and i've been bombarded by emails ever since oh god forbid excuse me i said god forbid you should get an extra email i gotta go we wouldn't want to distract you from whatever it is you're doing that's so goddamn important Four hundred thousand people are dead okay wake the fuck up okay take it easy it's all right it's all right why don't you let me take over for a while? I don't really believe in anything. And I feel trapped by everything. Am I bad, you? No. You just need to look deeper. Are you all right? No, I'm not. People don't give a shit, Mosey, and it makes me so angry. I understand. Why aren't you upset? Why aren't you outraged at what they did to you? Outraged that it's still going on. That little heart! That little heart! Seven minutes. Oh. Free, free, free. See, Max, you can't tell a story in seven. 
You should all be ashamed of yourselves. The seven bucks you spent on this play could have fed a child in Africa for a week! You son of a bitch. And I'm gonna tell you something else. Put my hands to you, you bitch. Is this in Sure, you're supposed to be in here right now. Oh, well, no. Currently homeless and in need of some mini bars, so. What have you got? The only thing I have right now is a $1,200 suite. Banco Supremo. No salir de casa se vea. Dan, I could get in a lot of trouble for this. It's all right. It's all right, man. What the fuck? I am consciousness. What the hell does that mean? I'm your consciousness, Dan. In cat form. Meow.
Am I dead? Am I dreaming? No. And yes. Well, which is it? So this is a dream. It's an opportunity. To what? To know thyself. Oh, give me a fucking break. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, don't eat me! <laughs> Arrogant. I don't want to eat you, Dan. I'm not that kind of cat. Please let go of me. I want what you want. Yeah, what's that? I want my freedom. You're on top of me. I am you. I don't know what that means. Why do you feel so trapped, Dan? Besides there being a giant cat on top of me? I don't fucking know. You know. Fuck off, I don't- It's everything! It's the whole goddamn world, okay? I'm miserable. And I'm terrified all the time. And I miss- I miss my sister. I don't know what to do. I want to be good. I want to do good. Please, I need help. Can you help me? What is this? Come inside and I'll show you.
I don't know. I don't want to lose this. I finished reading your play. Yeah? I loved it, Danny. Thanks, sis. Now all you have to do is write it. It's like... I don't remember who I am anymore. And I don't even care. I do remember you, though. I'll always remember you. You know, I can't keep stopping by, Danny. I know. Let me just remember you for a minute. Okay. I remember that face. I remember that smile. I remember feeling like you didn't know how precious you were to me. You know that you are, right? to your tongue. You were very sick, my friend. But it seems you're better, yes? Your cat. Your cat gave me something wonderful. He's very special, but uh, I don't think it was the cat. Kate told me about something. She's beautiful, Dan. I know. Something that happened to her as a little girl. Kenji. Benji, Benjo, Banjo, Ken, Kensho. There are many, many different names for that experience. Kensho is one of them. I spent the last day on a park bench, not needing anything, not even food. And in my whole life, I've never felt so alive. You should eat something. It's a prerequisite for aliveness. I came by to thank you for making me well, Dirtback. What are you doing here, anyway? I live here. You live at the Ruben Museum? Upstairs, yes. My family contributed some of this work. Why do you work at the Bedfellow? I like hotels. They are transitory places. The space between here and there. This is where all art comes from. The spaces in between. I'm pretty sure I don't deserve any of this. Everyone on Earth deserves it. Most search their entire lives for it. What is it? You tell me. It's like I'm afraid of messing this up. Look, I think I'm just gonna go back to the park for a couple days. You can sit on a bench in a park or in a museum and be completely content for the rest of your life. Especially if you've had the experience that I think you've had. And you're right. You don't need anything, not really. The world does not have what you need. But you, Dan, you have what the world needs. I want to show you something. 
Do you know what that is? Static? Static. Electromagnetic interference. But at least 1% of what we are watching right now is something called the cosmic microwave background. Radiation, Dan. Left over from the beginning of time. This noise was produced after our universe was formed. Any old TV or radio can pick it up. It's everywhere, from all directions, all the time. If I turn the TV off, it is still there. So, a transistor. <laughs> More a transceiver. Imagine that nature broadcasts through us, just like the universe broadcasts through the TV. What do you mean? Well, when you look at the sky or, or the traffic or, or plants or me, what is nature doing? It all feels like it's one thing. And yet, it's changing. It's changing. It's, it's growing. Isn't that all it has done for 14 billion years? Change and grow. Yes, it evolves. It evolves through you, through the desires that you have, that you think are your own. The universe shows us a very particular way to share with others just how beautiful the universe is in the first place. It becomes charming for us to do so. Follow that charm and you lead a charmed life. Hundreds of people, thousands perhaps. Strangers, Dan, they come together in a room and sit elbow to elbow to hear what a playwright has to say. You do like plays? I do. Why? When we hold the mirror up to nature, what's inevitably created is the expansion of happiness. What is it? Kate, okay. I'm reminded of her everywhere. Synchronicity. Everything happens for a reason? Everything happens for every reason. Oh, wise old master. <laughs> You're funny, Dan. This is the source speaking to you. Are you going to listen? Darpak. This is not a goodbye, Dan. Thank you. Be thankful that you were made worthy. But remember, all of this is meaningless unless we can share it. Your uncle will be coming right through there any moment. Will he remember me? Of course. They're in the elevators. <laughs> to see you here? I know. Congrats. Thanks. I have so many things I need to say to you. Why did you lie to me? I was afraid. Of what? Everything. But I'm not afraid anymore, Kate. Dan, I don't care about that. You're allowed to sleep with whoever That's you want. That's not what I want. What do you want? When I tell you everything that's happened in the last 72 hours. The thing is, I see. 
see you everywhere. When I think about you all the time, when I want us to share all of this with you, everything, I want us to be together. Dan. Let's get some dinner. I'll tell you everything. I'm going to San Francisco. When? In the morning. For how long? The other night when you said I don't belong here. I meant you didn't belong with me, but I was wrong. You do. Where I belong is helping people. At least for now. You were right about that. I thought about going back into the field, and I still might, but... There's an opening for more of this type of work in San Fran. There are other families out there who need me. And you're leaving in the morning? Yeah. Kane, I love you. Don't go. I love you too, Dan. I've always loved you ever since we were kids. And I believe in you. I believe in the man you're meant to be. I believe in you, too. I have to go do this, at least for a little while. But I'll be back. You want to just collect pleasure chemicals until the morning? Yes, please. That's the first thing. Okay. Second, I owe you money and I will pay you back. You're fucking better, you deadbeat. <laughs> I saw the article, it's great. Thanks. He completely ignored your little interruption. <laughs> oh, God. Start writing it? I'll send you a first draft as soon as I'm done. Good. Hey, you work in nylon? So, how's Ashley? She's better. Dad. I'm not gonna hold a grudge, Dan, if you won't. You still wanna go camping with me? Well, I'm not gonna go alone. The other thing is, I lost the hotel gig. I'm kinda in the red. A lot in the red. Were you above working for your old man when we get back? You know I failed home act, right? Yeah, you can do laundry, can't you? Barely. I'll learn. So, where do you want to go? April picked last time. I picked the time before. It's your turn. Arizona, New Mexico, Northern California. <laughs> 